It's playoff time in Oklahoma City, and InsideThunder.com presents the Thunder Game Report, powered by Wheeler Whitlock Insurance Agency, giving you the best value for your insurance dollar. Hi, I'm Randy Renner for InsideThunder.com at Chesapeake Energy Arena. The Oklahoma City Thunder lose game one to the Los Angeles Clippers, and it wasn't close. Blowout. The Clippers cruised past Oklahoma City 122 to 105, and it wasn't that close. Oklahoma City led 16 to 10 at the beginning of the game, and then the Clippers went on a big run to really get out in front of the Thunder. Oklahoma City didn't get closer than 13 points the rest of the night. A huge night from Chris Paul. He had 32 points, tied his career high for made three-pointers in a six-minute stretch of the first quarter. He hit five three balls. He ended up going eight out of nine from three and 12 of 14 overall for those 32 points. Just an outstanding effort by him. Blake Griffin, the hometown boy back in town, had 23. Pretty decent nights from Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant with 29 points for Russ and 25 for KD. The big problem was the Thunder couldn't defend the three-point line. They gave up 15 three balls. That's about double what the Clippers average. That's not going to get it done. Scott Brooks wasn't very happy. Neither were Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. We heard from them and also Doc Rivers, CP3, and Blake Griffin at the podium. Well, we have to um, uh, definitely play much better on the defensive side of the ball. Um, they were getting to the free throw line. They were getting to the paint. They were making threes. So we have to do a better job all the way around. And we will, we will get better. That's, that's, not, that's not who we are. Unfortunately, we didn't come out with, um, we have to play better defense. We have to play better defense against this team. This team is very powerful. They have a lot of players, and, and they played well tonight. They were making their shots. Chris Paul had an unbelievable three-point night. Um, but we have to do a better job of guarding the line and guarding the ball. Bless you. Uh, Coach Michael Kenny, Norman Transcript. Have you ever seen your defense this this poor, just unable to really stop them from doing anything they wanted. Well, they, they they were feeling comfortable. You know, they got good players, and we we didn't we didn't make them fill us, and we have to do a better job with that. And then they were they were on fire from the three point line. I mean, uh, Paul hit uh, eight of them, and as a team they hit 15. So we have to do a better job of guarding that line. You know, they 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 average eight, and they nearly double their average. Kurt. Anthony Slater with the Oklahoma. Uh, Karan and Reggie uh, combined two of 15 tonight. How important was that the bench disparity tonight, and how worried are you moving forward? Well, it's one game. You know, I, it's unfortunate we didn't play well tonight, but it is one game. It's it's a uh, it's the first of four. We've said that many times, and you're going to hear it often. It's just the first of four. They they're up 1-0. We have to do a better job. We have to make some adjustments. We have a, a day to, a day tomorrow and. I believe in all of our guys. Uh, that's the, the flexibility that we have as a group. Uh, I, I'm confident in all the guys. I'm confident we're all going to play much better Wednesday night. Uh, Robert Morales, LA Daily News. Coach, uh, you guys were up 16-10 early, and, and you looked fine, and then all of a sudden the, the, the bottom kind of fell out. Uh, did you sense anything, any you know psychological thing where the players weren't ready to play anything and all like that? No, I, you know, at that point I think we gave up an offense rebound for a three, and then we had a mistake for another three. They went on, then they went on a real nice three-point run. I think uh, Chris Paul had 17 after that after that break. I think he had five or zero points with seven minutes to go, and he got hot. You know, he got hot. That's why uh, great players can do that. Um, we've seen that many times in our building with our guys, and, and he did get hot. We have to do a better job of making him um, feel some more pressure. Kevin Dean Blevin. Uh, Kevin Smith, News 9com You guys, when you defend Chris Paul and you defend that pick and roll, a lot of times you go under that screen. You want to make him, force him back behind that line. Don't let him get in the paint. So when he starts shooting like that, is there really anything you can do schematically to stop that? I mean, because that seems like the strategy from the beginning is to make him shoot. No, I mean, no, it's not that, that wasn't the strategy. The strategy was to get into the ball and, and get him off the ball. But he did a good job. They, they set great screens, one, and then he made some shots. Uh, we just have to do a better job defensively. It's, it's, it's about us playing better defensively. Dean Blevins, News 9, uh, Oklahoma City. Scott, after they scored 39, 30, and 35, I stopped marking down uncontested shots that they were hitting. What, what's the, what would be the biggest problem? Would it be the fundamentals tonight or uh, effort? Or can you put a finger well, on we, it? Well, we didn't, we didn't play well. We but I'm did, talking about yeah. in, in contesting shots. Yeah, well, when you get the final number, let me know. 
we didn't we didn't play well. They made they made a lot of threes. They made a lot of threes. We we'll figure that out um, tomorrow. Barry Trammell, the Oklahoma and Scott, the last month or so of the season, you you had some games where your three point defense was not good. That went away most of the time against Memphis. Was that just because of the Memphis style of play? Not a lot of shooters on the f floor. Well, so was this reminiscent of of the struggles you had some down the stretch? Well, we've had you know it's definitely a different different series, different team, different uh, style of play. We have to we have to flip flip the page uh, quickly. This is a fast team. This is a team that gets out in transition. This is a team that has bigs that can roll and can finish way above the rim. This is a team that shoots threes, and we have to be able to cover it all. If um, we have to play much better, we have to figure out how to how to how to be able to contain all of it because you have to do that against this team. Uh, John Hoover, the Tulsa World. Was it playing Memphis? It seemed like coming off of playing Memphis, playing this team would be to your advantage, but it worked. It seemed, looked like it worked the other way, where their speed was just the opposite of what Memphis has. Well, it's it's like I said, it's two different style of play, but there's there's no excuse for that. We knew we knew that this is the fast team. We played them four times. We were in the hundreds many times against this team, and, and they have explosive players, and we have to do a better job. It's, it's as simple as that. We have to do a better job game two. Bob Barry, K4, the NBC in Oklahoma City. Scott, you had success, obviously, when you changed to Karan Butler starting in the final games of the Memphis series. You went back to Tabo tonight. Well, will you go back or stay with that game two? No, what's, what's I mean, we'll, we'll look and we'll see what adjustments we have to make. We had... You know, with the way they play, we and they come off of pin downs, especially JJ Reddick. Uh, that's Tobble's strength. Our, our start was good. You know, we were up 16 to 10 uh, halfway in that first quarter, and then, and then they went on a three point uh, tear, and then, and then we were playing from behind the rest of the game. Darnell. Darnell Mayberry, Oklahoma. Scott, you went with your one of your better offensive lineups about four minutes into the third. At that point, were you just trying to keep up with them and, and score since you were having so much trouble stopping them? Well, we had to change. We had to make some adjustments. Uh, uh, we were, changed a few of our pick and roll coverages, and we changed our, our, some of our lineups. And playing small uh, didn't work. You know, the big didn't do a, we didn't do a good job playing big. We didn't do a good job playing small. One thing about our team, we're going to stick together. We're going to figure out how to do it together. It's not about big and small. It's about our team uh, playing much better against them game two. <laughs> Anthony, stay with Oklahoma. DeAndre Jordan, one eight on on Hackett Jordan tonight. Do you plan to use that uh, more moving well, it, forward? Well, it can always help when needed. You know, we were down twenty something points, um, so we were. You know, anytime you have that opportunity, you can use it against him. He, sh he shot forty two percent for the season. Last one from two left. Uh, Mark Spears, Yahoo. The last series, when you watch film on Chris, and certainly was a lot different than what you saw tonight. I, how did you guys scout him? And I'm sure you didn't expect to see this. Well, he, he shot the ball well. I don't think you expect anybody to go eight for nine from three. Um, you know, at best, you're going to hit, you know, four out of ten or four out of nine. Uh, he, we knew he was healthy. I mean, he played 42 minutes, had 22 points, 14 assists, uh, and played very well uh, in game seven. So we, we knew that he was healthy, and, and obviously he is. He played a good basketball game. We have to do a better job of um, carding him. Gary George, Inland Valley News. Russell, talk about the defense against Chris Paul and the performance trying to stop him. I mean, he hit eight threes. He wasn't doing nothing crazy, but he hit eight threes. I mean, he can't do too much but contest. You know, he hits some, some tough shots. But we live with that. <clears throat> Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City, CBS. Guys, often in the playoffs when we've talked about defense that hasn't been up to par. You, you've said we didn't come with quite the intensity that we needed to. Both of you, would you point to that, Kevin, defensively uh, as the first issue or, or what would be the biggest issue? Well, <clears throat> you know, we started the game off, uh, well, they were hitting jump shots. That's what we want. Blake Griffin started the game off hitting two or three jump shots. Then Chris Paul hit four or five threes in a row. And then J.J. Riddick and then Matt Barnes. So we kept him out of our paint. Um, but I wouldn't say I think our intent was there. I mean, we didn't we didn't come out uh, nonchalant. We came out aggressive. They hit shots on us, and they uh, they kind of loosened our defense up. When a guy has you know five or six threes in a row, you know you don't want to give up no more. So you know that's when they started to get some stuff in the paint. But you know our effort 
you know, was there. Um, you know, we had good intentions, but they, you know, they got hot. So we got to we got to correct it. We got to make a miss next game and um, be a little bit more physical. Yeah, Russell Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. You guys actually cut it to 15 early third quarter. Paul had a shot in the corner. You were all over him. He sort of just fell back and made it from the corner. On that kind of shot, is that a situation where you think this is this is just his night and not ours? I um, mean, it's not Chris Paul versus the Thunder. It's the Clippers versus the Thunder. Um, you know, he had some big shots. Some other guys had some shots on their team. Like Kevin said, we, we did a good job. But sticking to our principles, they just hit some tough shots. Uh, Michael Kenny, Norman Transcript. Coach Brooks said that that the Thunder didn't make the Clippers feel them. What do you, in your mind is what does that mean? I mean, we <clears throat> like, like I said, they got loose on some stuff. Um, you know, they hit some shots. You know, but it's tough to guard a team. You know, when they hit the threes, and then you don't want to give up the paint points, but you don't want to give up the threes as well. So, you know, but we we do got to be more physical with them and uh, make them feel us a little bit more. Uh, you know, so we, we just got to be better. We got to move the ball a little better, you know, also make some shots on our end. But, you know, we're confident, you know, we got to watch film and get better tomorrow and uh, come back on uh, on Wednesday. Kevin, Tony Sellers from the Associated Press. You mentioned being more physical. Uh, you guys didn't commit your first foul until there was like a minute left in the first quarter. Is that, you know, you're not getting close up on the ball and defending? Is that... The kind of physical that you're talking about, trying to get up in their face and deny the ball. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think you know, fouling is, you know, having team fouls is not necessarily playing physical. You know, I think um, forcing them out of their sets, uh, taking them out of their spots, um, you know, bumping cutters. Uh, I think that's physical. And uh, so not ha making a hard foul or pushing somebody to the ground. I don't think that's toughness or physicality, but. Just sticking to what we do, what we've been doing all year. Just, you know, not letting guys run free through our paint. Not letting guys just stare down shots and roll to the rim and get dunks. Um, you know, just being on a string. Bob Barry, K4, the NBC. Russ, you guys went on a, like, 9-0 run or something and got up 16-10, and then they scored 14 really quick points after that. Did you guys relax a little bit at that point? Um, no, I don't think we relax. Um, I mean, they just hit some tough shots. I mean, they probably hit like three or four threes in a row. Um, you know, that got them going and it kind of spread our, our defense out. But, um, you know, we're going to go back and look at film and, you know, see what we can get better. Um, John Hoover, the Tulsa World. Kevin, can you kind of describe coming off of the Memphis series? and how this adjustment is playing these guys at a totally different team, more speed, less bulk, whatever that is, uh, and, and the adjustment that uh, you guys had to make? Yeah, it's two totally different teams. In Memphis, they have guys on the perimeter that can score. This team does. Uh, you, know, they, they, you know, they shoot threes. You know, they got up 29 a night and make more than half of them. Um, you know, Memphis wasn't a three-point shooting team. They used the whole shot clock, and Clippers don't. You know, so they push the tempo a little bit. Um, so we have to uh, switch gears. We had to switch gears quickly and just, you know, focus on how we can uh, control the paint and, and the perimeter. And uh, if we watch film and get better at it and come out, uh, you know, a little bit more physical, uh, we, should, we should be fine. Royce Young, DailyThunder.com. Kitty, the three losses you had against Memphis were all painfully close, excruciating games. This one kind of got away from you. Which, which one's easier to let go of as you move on to game two, or are they just the same? Is it just a loss? A loss is a loss, man. It's just it's tough to tough to swallow, especially on your home floor in the playoffs. But a quick turnaround, you know, we, we got a day in between, and we play again on Wednesday. So that's the best part about it, just knowing that the games come so quickly and but a loss is a loss. It's tough to uh, it's tough to you know play that way, especially on our home floor, getting booed by our fans. We never want to never want to do that, but uh, we we'll always learn from it and uh, move forward and get better from it. Anyone else? Just his toughness. Um, I thought he really set the tone for us um, to start the game. You know, um, I just thought he went downhill a lot. Uh, you know what I mean by, with the drives, and that's what we've been trying to. Tell them to do um, quick decisions, move the ball. Uh, but I thought 
his being aggressive to start the game really set the tone for our team throughout the game. Uh, you know, I said before the game, I just felt like he felt better. You could see it uh, this morning. You know, he's just moving better. So that was good. We need it. Um, I think one other time, I think he had that one bad game. You remember where he missed all those shots and he came out aggressive. Other than that, not this aggressive. No, that was good. We needed it, though. We really did. We needed a tone setter uh, because, you know, turning around that quickly, I think he felt that he needed to set the tone. Well, I don't know. I just thought he, you know, I, I really don't know. Maybe, you know, with all the stuff that happened, just winning that series allowed him to, to, to breathe a little bit, you know. Um, but you could see it. Like yesterday, I thought he was not moving well. Today in shooting around, you just, you just felt like he was moving better. And maybe that's just a hamstring. Maybe one day it'll be tight and one day it's not. But tonight, he looked great. Doc. Right here. We've got right here. Uh, Dean Blevins, News 9, CBS, Oklahoma City. You had uncontested looks, it seemed like, all night long. Did you do anything different offensively? No, we moved the ball. Uh, we shared the ball. We were really good with our spacing tonight. Um, again, I thought uh, D.C., Darren Collison, and C.P., uh, Chris Paul, going downhill with their drives made their bigs stay a little longer. Uh, with our bigs' ability to roll to the basket where you can just throw it up, um, you know, they had to suck in. And the, the, the key is you have to find the guys. You know, there's openings on every team on our defense. And tonight we just had one of those nights where the ball found the open guy every single time. And then the second part is you got to make it. And we did that too. So we just had one of those nights. <laughs> the bench, I thought, you, you, thank you. I was going to say that, uh, but you said it for me. So. Um, yeah, I thought Chris set the tone, but I thought the bench came in the end of the first quarter and through the second quarter. Uh, I thought that was a difference, honestly. It was just a 10, 12-point game, and then the bench got it to 20. Uh, and then the starters came back in and extended it, uh, and then they did it again. So I thought that was huge for us. I thought other than Chris uh, setting the tone, I thought the bench was the key to the game tonight for us. Can, can you de can you describe Chris's level of intuition as far as determining kind of what what a team might need in a no it's 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 great you know he has he's just very very smart and um, he sometimes gets in a, a way with that you know because he's thinking so much uh, but today I thought he was in a great place he he played free without thought but when we needed him to he he, he did it uh, I thought his intuition today was was phenomenal. He knew we needed a good start, um, and he got one for us. That's just why he's who he is. Yeah, it, just during the regular season, how often, how much does he act as his team's conscience, Chris? How much oh, do they follow him? Yeah, a lot. I mean, him and Blake, obviously, but but Chris is the voice in a lot of ways. Um, but they both are. I mean, they're both just so good, and they play off of each other. Like, I, I thought, you know, there's little things with your team where you, you find growth. Like, I thought Blake saw Chris going early, and instead of running to the post, he never went to the post. He kept running to find Chris to set a pick for him. Um, you know, that's, that's being a great teammate. You know, you see one guy got it going. Of course you can go down to the post and post up. Instead, Blake ran to set picks to get him open. Uh, I, just, I love that. I love that when you see that with a team. Doc, uh, Bob Barry, K4, the NBC in Oklahoma City. You had a grueling series your first round with Golden State. These guys went seven with Memphis. Yeah. Conversely, were you a little surprised by their lack of energy or effort at the start? Of yeah, that? you know what? I thought they came out with energy. Yeah, I thought we, we made shots. And, you know, it's, it's funny. That's what I was concerned with coming into this game. If either team, I didn't, you know, if, if got a quick lead, mentally it's going to be very tough. You know, and fortunately we were the team that got the quick lead. And I thought mentally uh, it was very tough. Gary George, Inland Valley News. Doc, talk about the defensive performance against Westbrook and Durant. Although they did get their points, you did maintain the other players, keep, kept them in check. Yeah, I thought we did a good job of that. Um, you know, Westbrook got a, a bunch of pull-ups that we didn't like, honestly. Um, Durant is, you know, honestly, uh, I thought Matt and everybody did a good job. He missed some shots that Durant usually makes. Um, but the key was, I thought, they were all hard shots, you know, nothing was easy. And 
that's what we have to do with him. He's a great player, and he's going to make most shots, but they at least have to work for him. And I thought our guys did a good job of that. And then they took away everybody else. Uh, ben Bolcelli, Times. Uh, Blake Griffin got some cheers mixed in with the booze when he was introduced. The fans never what? really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, did, did that seem odd? I mean, it was almost like a, a hometown guy. And can you talk about the play with uh, Ibaka? With the, with the, well, uh, let me just say this. I played for the New York Knicks, and I grew up in Chicago. When we played the Knicks in the playoffs, what do you think the fans did? No, the, the Chicago fans, when I, they boo because Blake is a hometown guy. They love him, but just not right now. I think that's probably the thing, and there's no problem with that. I have no problem with that. I get that. They, they have to cheer for their home team, uh, not their home player. So, uh, what was the second question? Yeah, I didn't get a good look at it. Um, you know, I thought they were going to look at it just to review it. So, I haven't seen it, so I don't have a comment. Coach, coming out of the second half, obviously the Thunder normally try to make a big run. Just what was the key for you all to be able to sniff that out and make sure that Just didn't happen? keep doing what we're doing. You know, every coach is paranoid, and when we had the lead at halftime, obviously you're, at halftime you, you, you're trying to get them to come out and play the same way. I actually thought the first minute of the second half, both teams were pretty bad, you know, and then all of a sudden we made a shot, and it opened it up for us. Anthony started with Oklahoma. DeAndre was one of eight on the kind of hack of Jordan tonight. Are you worried they're going to use that a lot moving forward? And was there any thought to take him out when he no, was? No, no, he's, he's our guy, you know. Um, he, he, listen, even when he misses, he gets stops on the other end. I don't know how much of an advantage it gives teams. Um, you know, there'll be nights where we may have to take him out, and there'll be nights where you keep him in. Uh, they've done it all year, so they're gonna teams going to keep doing it. Um, I, I try to take what's given to me, and early, um, I think the shot clock might have been running down on one of the first uh, shots that I shot, and I made it, and then um, just kept trying to be aggressive. Didn't want to force it, anything like that, because I'm one of those people that think, you know, when whenever you're hot or something like that, if you take a bad shot, then it's gone. <laughs> you know, so uh, just try to be aggressive. BG kept saying, be aggressive. Bob Barry, K4, NBC, NBC, Oklahoma City. Chris, you know, obviously Oklahoma people are welcoming you back, Blake back. You guys have been here before. Any good feelings about playing in this building? Have anything to do with that career game tonight in the playoffs? No, nah. <laughs> nah, not for me. Um, uh, obviously, I love it here. Uh, Blake, we talk about it all the time. You know, this is where we actually first met. And... I mean, we, we love it here in Oklahoma, but I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Hey, uh, Chris, you got here before the team did. Did you feel hot pregame, or I don't know? How do you feel? Yeah, I, <laughs> I do a lot of shooting uh, with uh, Super Dave, David Sevens, one of our assistant coaches. And um, me and Blake talked about it this morning, the shoot around. Obviously, we were still a little, you know, tight and stuff like that from traveling, but. Uh, you know, we talked about it was like 8.30, we better be ready to go. So I came over here early before the game and got a lot of shots up. So, uh, you know, I think that, that uh, had a lot to do with it too. What did you do over the last, I guess, 48 hours or so to get your body right after after that last series? I, mean, I think I said it after game seven. I, I personally feel like we have the best training staff in the league. And, you know, he – you know, JP, Jason Powell, who's in charge of it, he stays on us uh, as well as ourselves. Uh, um, you know, after that game seven the next morning, he sent a text, didn't he? Told us all that we should come in and get in the cold tub and do all that different type of stuff. And um, we you, got ready. How'd, how'd you feel out there, seven? Huh? How'd you feel out there, game seven? Oh, I was tired. I was tired, but we, I mean, that was a very emotional game, but nobody was going to feel sorry for you tonight. <clears throat> I mean, when when somebody's got it going like that, you just want to try to stay out of the way as much as possible, and but also you know help help keep that fire going. And, and um, like you said, I mean, the first quarter was was crazy, so I, we were just trying to to spring him, get him open. Um, but then really, you know, in the second half, we we were moving the ball so well. 
Um, and, and it all really started for us defensively, but I mean, really just tried to tried to stay out of his way, let him do what he was doing. Yeah, Chris, back here. Doc was saying before the game that you know, all, all the years you played in the league, you recognize how precious these moments are and how rare they are, and how you've never gotten past this round. There's a certain desperation. You could talk about your thinking and all that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've never been past the second round, and this is my ninth season. Uh, and every year, you feel like you on that team. And I remember that team I was on in 08. We lost Game Seven to the Spurs, and. You just feel like you're always going to be back there, and it's not the case. And this team here, I think, is a special team. We, you know, uh, not only do we have a good team, but we're fun. It's fun to be around each other. And <clears throat> you know, tonight I think the biggest thing was just moving the ball. It wasn't like I was just coming out making unbelievable shot. It was because the court was open. And you know, when I had two defenders, I gave it to Blake, and that's what put so much pressure on the defense because B uh, B G is such a great passer. Dean Blevins, News 9, CBS, Oklahoma City. Both of you, Blake, can you talk about getting this first game and now, you know, you're in a position to going into that second one. If you were to get that, then go home, it's, it would be special. But getting this first one, talk about the importance of that. I think it's very important. You know, we wanted to set a tone for the for the series, really. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the whole goal of playing on the road is to come in and, uh, you know, try to get that home court advantage back. Uh, or not back, but try to try to take it over. So, um, I mean, we, we responded. I think mentally we were really strong tonight. Um, just you know, from from playing playing that game seven and then you know flying here and kind of a quick turnaround. I mean, it was it was for both teams, but I thought we we mentally we just locked in and, and um, took care of it. Uh, ben Balcelli Times, uh, Blake, you, you got some cheers when you're introduced. Did you did you notice that? And what did that mean to you? Also, did your mom? Uh, did you get the strawberry cake? Uh, the cheers, I mean, it's always great. Always great to come back home. This is home. Um, that's, that'll never change, uh, you know, no matter how many how many playoff series we play against the Thunder. Um, and for the strawberry cake, I'm going to go home tomorrow after practice. I haven't so gotten any yet. So. I, we're, I wanted to wait. I don't want, you know, everybody to, you know, have a, have a sugar overload before game two. So it'll be on the plane um, for everybody going back home. So we got that to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma and Chris, eight and nine three point shooting. Is that ranked near the yeah, best that's shooting what I do. of your life? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lie. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those nights. I promise you, it's got to be a career high for makes and attempts. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. This one will definitely go down in the uh, history books for me. Don't don't count on it for game two. I tell you that. <clears throat> Anthony Slater with the Oklahoma. Uh, you guys obviously staked uh, yourself to a big lead, but how was the you know how good was the bench tonight? Really ballooning that lead. Yeah, man, our, our bench was amazing. It was amazing, and uh, that's what's made our team so special all season long. Uh, Jamal Crawford shows you why he's the sixth man of the year, um, and we just played the right way all night long. We moved the ball, uh, tried to make right, the right plays, and uh, we're at our best when we defend. You know, whether it's the first unit or the second unit, and that's what we try to do. Chris, kind of touching on that, the job you guys did defensively, obviously Durant got his and, and Russell got his, but the way you guys guarded the rest of the team, is that was that kind of the emphasis, or that just happened that um, way? I mean, you would love to try to, you know, limit, uh, you know, Russ and KD as much as possible, but both of them are great players, great players. Uh, Got to try to keep them off the free throw line and try to make things as tough as possible, you know, but... Uh, <clears throat> You know, there's a reason why Russ is as good as he is, and he's a handful. And is, you know, I tell Blake them all game long. I need help. You know, I can't just defend him by myself. And then KD, he's gonna make enough tough shots as it is. So I think Matt did an outstanding job, and all the different guys that was on him. But I mean, it's a reason why he'll be named MVP tomorrow. And we just got to keep making things tough. Blake, what happened on the play with uh, Ibaka with the technical? Uh, I was just laying on the ground and. Just kind of kicked me. <laughs> I don't know. What, I mean, yeah, I felt like that. So, Sam A. McUSA today. Chris Doc mentioned that in the film session yesterday, guys were nodding off. Guys were exhausted. <laughs> when you come off that series, <laughs> he ratted you out. 
when you come off that series and, and the heaviness of everything you guys went through, I know it's only one day, he but told, did you huh? find a way to, to find a second win? Yeah, I can't believe he told that. But, uh, you know, we met at the plane yesterday at, what, 12? Mm -hmm. And we flew, we flew here as soon as we landed. We came here and uh, we watched film and watched a lot of film. And uh, I think we were going to go through all the players. But, you know, once he got through Reggie Jackson and Russell Westbrook, I was nodding off. <laughs> Zim, <laughs> that was my matchup. And he just said enough and said, go get some rest. <clears throat> Man, I don't know, you know, and that's, it seems like we talk about it a lot or whatnot, but that's what makes Doc and our coaching staff so amazing. You know what I mean? Is that they understand, like, he's really a player's coach. Like, he didn't yell at, I wasn't the only one either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't yell at anybody, like, get, like, he understood, and, you know, we watched it this morning. So there you have it, everybody talking about the game, and just remember, it's just one game, and remember, the Thunder lost two at home to the Memphis Grizzlies, and they ended up winning that series. Memphis, of course, though, a much different team from this Clipper bunch. Uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, a run-and-gun kind of team, and they are not afraid to shoot the three, and they will hit most of them. In fact, in their series with the uh, Golden State Warriors that was just completed, the Clippers set a franchise record for made threes with 68. Their previous franchise record was in the 40s, so they obliterated their franchise record for made threes in a seven-game series, and it looks like they're well on their way to doing something else like that if this series ends up going seven. The next game, of course, coming up on Wednesday night. Tuesday, of course, Kevin Durant will receive his Most Valuable Player Award, so that will be a highlight on Tuesday. We'll see if the Thunder can regroup. Come back out here on Wednesday night and knock off this bunch from La La Land. We'll keep you updated right here on InsideThunder.com.